Okay, hey YouTube. Today, I want to show you an easy way of telling if you have bent valves in your cylinder head. Recently, I um, had this car come in and it's a uh, Mitsubishi 3000 GT. Uh, it's got a 3.0 motor in it, dual overhead cams. As you can see, the two cams here. This is what's considered a dual overhead cam motor. All right, you've got two cams on this head and you have two cams on that head. Well, the problem with this particular vehicle is the timing belt broke. Now, a lot of people will think, well, oh, timing belt breaks, just put another one on there. Well, some cars you can do that. Just put another timing belt on there and you won't have an issue. But there are a few cars out there which are considered to be interference. Well, there are a few cars out there that have motors that are considered to be a, what's called an interference motor. And this happens to be one of them. So, number one, if you have this type of car or this particular motor, Mitsubishi 3000 GT with the dual overhead cam motors, cam motor in it, make sure you change your timing belt at the specified time. I would even change that some of bitch early if I had if if I had the choice and the, the money and the options. But the one thing that you don't want it to do is break because once that timing belt breaks, you run into bending valves, which are located inside the cylinder head. Okay, Let's see if we can zoom in on that for you. But as you can see, those are the valves down in there. On this side here, you have valves down in there as well. Now, the principle of the way this thing works is, as this camshaft is turning around, okay, you'll notice it's got lobes on it. These lobes press down on the lifters, which press down on the valve, which pushes the valve up and down. So as you're giving it gas, it's going to move faster and faster as this thing spins around but it's also moving up and down to let gas and air inside. So, this particular one, timing belt broke, and I told the guy, I said, look, your timing belt is broken, you're probably gonna have some damaged valves in the head. He didn't believe me, but, you know, anyway, here we are, hardcore fact. So I'm gonna show you a quick, easy way on how you can tell that your valves are bent in, in your cylinder head, um, so that, like, you don't waste a bunch of time thinking you'll put a timing belt on there and then be done with it, up and running. You know, it's a quick, easy check. First thing you want to do is you take your intake plenum off or your and your intake manifold, okay? We've already done that there. For those of you that work on cars, you understand totally what I'm talking about. If you do not understand what I'm talking about, then you might want to stop and don't even try to work on your car. Let somebody else do it. <laughs> Either way, there's your intake manifold and there's the plenum. Some people will say the lower intake. Some people will say the upper intake. But it just depends on who you are, who taught you how to do it. But um, that is actually the plenum, and that is actually the intake manifold there. Okay, so that goes there. But we'll notice down in here we've got these valves. Okay, Let's see if I can get a little more light on that valve for you. All right, you see that valve back there? Okay, you see that gaping hole back there in the very back? You see how that's open? All right, you see the one beside it is open? You can tell pretty quick on here because this one's open a little bit farther than that one is there. You come up here on the other side and you see that there, that valve there, and see that valve there? You see it's kind of open too. And we'll come here, see that valve there on that side? Yeah, that one's open. Yeah, see that black line around there? And that one's semi-open. But wait a second. Here, you notice your camshaft, the lobes are side by side so those valves right there should be open the same amount on both sides see that see how that valve is open really really good there and that valve isn't now obviously other than the visual inspection you can also take and turn the camshaft all right and you should notice some differences here camshaft. <laughs> Alright, so there's your, see that valve going up and down? See that? See how that moves? See this moving? Well, that one's not moving. That last one, let's go the other direction. Now, um, also when you're doing this, you want to move your, make sure you're not at top dead center on your um, crankshaft down there. That means your pistons will be all the way up and you will make contact. Um, of course, when you're doing it by hand, you're not going to really... Hopefully, you shouldn't damage anything. Okay. You see these valves here? See how that's opening up? 
but you notice it's not closing up. The reason it's not closing up is because that valve stem there is bent and it won't allow it to close all the way up. There's no pressure on it anywhere. Okay, right there now I'm pushing it down and it should snap close, but it's not snapping closed. Okay, still got space there. And as long as you have that space there and it's not snapping closed, and that's going to allow air to either come out or not seep out. Look at that one. We'll go the other direction on here, on this one. See that? See how it's moving down there? But it's not closing all the way. It's not closing at all. So it would never be able to get build up compression on that cylinder. Alright? So that's one quick, easy way of telling that your valves are bent. This is the first head we took off. And you can see here, it's just as bad. Valve on the end. Okay, now check this out. You see here? I've already taken your lifters out, which these are the lifters. This piece here. Okay, and I've taken the rocker arms out. Alright, so there's nothing pushing down on that valve. See that rocker arm? Alright, so with the rocker arms out and the lifters out, that, see the spring on there? That spring is supposed to pull that valve all the way up. See the spring on there? That spring is supposed to pull that valve up. Well, look at here. What do you see? Oh, I can position this thing right. As you can see, that valve, I get the iron there, it's open. So, yeah, it's not sealing up, so that lets you know that your valve is bent. I'm trying to get a little better. Okay, so, let me see in there. And there's no rocker arms holding this valves down on here so they should be closed and as you can see closed it off so we're going to replace the cylinder head here and get this light in there ah, anyway I think you got my point <laughs> Anyway, if your valves aren't closing, then of course you're not gonna build compression, your motor's not gonna run. So, the easy way of doing it, like I said, take the um, intake manifold off, put them off, and then um, look and see if the valves are closed. And turn your, turn, turn your camshaft, okay? And if you see them going up and down and not sealing and closing all the way, that's a pretty good indicator that your valves are bent. Now, if you do have bent valves, just find your local machine shop, pull your heads off of the car, uh, these heads are torqued down. You'll have to remove a few, a few things to get to it. But once you remove those heads off, um, you can take them to a machine shop, and the machine shop can replace those valves. I would say, would go ahead and give you this bit of advice. If you do replace the valves in there, go ahead and have them put new springs and new uh, valve stem uh, keepers in there as well. Uh, sometimes those components will wear out and get weak. and. You know, if you break that, you drop a valve and you cause other problems and while you're out there fixing it, you may as well go ahead and invest the 10 extra dollars for those new keepers. <laughs> Until next time, if you have any questions, YouTube, give me a comment, post, chat, subscribe, tell your friends. Other than that, have a great day.